You know what's fascinating about evolution? It doesn't have a plan. There's no blueprint. No designer sitting up there thinking, okay, let's make this animal perfectly adapted for its environment. No, evolution is basically just throwing stuff at the wall and seeing what sticks. And for every success story, every perfectly adapted predator, every efficient herbivore, every creature that thrived for millions of years, there are dozens of evolutionary experiments that just didn't work out. And some of these failures, they were absolutely massive. We're talking about giant animals that evolution tried to make work. Animals that seemed like they should have been successful, but for whatever reason, they flopped. Maybe they were too slow. Maybe they were too specialized. Maybe they just got unlucky. But whatever the reason, these creatures represent nature's failed experiments, the biological equivalent of prototypes that never made it past the testing phase. Today, we're going to explore some of the most interesting evolutionary dead ends in history, focusing specifically on the giants that nature tried to create, but ultimately couldn't sustain. And trust me, some of these animals are so bizarre, so impractical, that you'll wonder how they even existed in the first place. Let's start with one of my personal favorites, a creature so weird, so over-designed, that it seems like evolution was just showing off. I'm talking about Dinochirus, the terrible hand. For decades, all we had of this dinosaur were its arms just arms, and they were massive, 2.4 meters or 8 feet long, with three-fingered hands tipped with claws that were each 25 centimeters or 10 inches long. When these arms were first discovered in Mongolia in 1965, paleontologists had no idea what to make of them. Based on the size of the arms, they estimated the full animal might have been 12 meters long and weighed several tons. They assumed it was some kind of giant carnivore, maybe the most terrifying theropod ever, and for nearly 50 years, Dinochirus remained a mystery. Then, in 2014, two more specimens were discovered, and we finally got to see what this thing actually looked like. And it was not what anyone expected. Dinochirus turned out to be about 11 meters or 36 feet long and weighed around 6.4 tons, so the size estimates were close. But instead of being a fearsome predator, it was basically a giant, humpbacked duck dinosaur. It had a long, flat snout like a hadrosaur, a sail or hump on its back, powerful legs, and those ridiculously oversized arms. And here's the kicker. It was an omnivore. Those massive claws weren't for killing prey. They were probably for digging, stripping vegetation, and maybe occasionally defending itself. This thing looked like evolution couldn't decide what it wanted to be, so it just threw together parts from five different dinosaurs and called it a day. So why did Dinochirus fail? Well, it didn't exactly fail. It survived a million years during the late Cretaceous, but it never diversified. It never spawned multiple species or spread beyond Mongolia. It remained a weird one-off. And when the asteroid hit 66 million years ago, that was it. No descendants, no legacy, just a bizarre evolutionary experiment that ended. The problem was probably its over-specialization. It was too big to be an efficient omnivore. Those massive arms and claws were energetically expensive to maintain. The hump or sail served no clear purpose. It was an animal that tried to do everything and ended up not being great at anything. Now let's talk about another failed giant, one that's even more bizarre, Therizinosaurus. If Dinochirus looked weird, Therizinosaurus looked like a fever dream. This theropod dinosaur lived during the late Cretaceous in what is now Mongolia and China, and it was absolutely massive, 5 meters or 16 feet tall, and weighing around 5 tons. But the real showstopper was its claws. Therizinosaurus had the longest claws of any animal ever discovered, up to 1 meter or 3.3 feet long. That's longer than your arm. These weren't just big, they were absurdly big, like comically oversized garden tools attached to a dinosaur. For years, paleontologists thought these claws must have been used for hunting, maybe ripping open prey or slashing at enemies. But as more fossils were discovered, it became clear that Therizinosaurus was actually an herbivore. Those meter-long claws were for pulling down tree branches and stripping vegetation. Think about that for a second. Evolution created an animal with claws longer than machetes, and it used them to eat salad. The problem with Therizinosaurus was energetics. Maintaining those claws required massive amounts of resources. The arm muscles needed to control them were enormous. And for what? 
To grab branches that smaller, more efficient herbivores could reach just fine without the biological equivalent of Edward Scissorhands. Therizinosaurus represents an evolutionary arms race that went too far. It evolved longer and longer claws to reach higher vegetation, but at some point, the cost outweighed the benefit. And sure enough, Therizinosaurus went extinct with the rest of the non-avian dinosaurs, leaving no descendants. But dinosaurs weren't the only group that produced failed giants. Mammals have their own share of evolutionary disasters, and some of them are absolutely wild. Let me introduce you to Calicotherium, possibly the weirdest mammal that ever lived, related to horses and rhinos, but it looked nothing like either. It had the body of a gorilla, the head of a horse, and the claws of a sloth. Seriously, it walked on its knuckles like a gorilla because it had these massive, curved claws on its front feet that prevented it from walking normally. This thing lived during the Miocene and Pliocene, roughly 16 to 3.5 million years ago and it could reach heights of 2.8 meters, or 9 feet, when standing upright. It weighed around 1,200 kilograms, or 2,600 pounds, basically the size of a large horse, but shaped completely wrong. Those claws were probably used for pulling down tree branches or digging up roots. But here's the problem. Walking on your knuckles is incredibly inefficient for a large mammal. It's slow, it's awkward, and it limits your mobility. Modern gorillas can get away with it, because they're not that big, and they don't need to migrate long distances. But for an animal the size of Calicotherium, living in open woodlands, it was a serious handicap. Calicotherium lasted for about 12 million years, which sounds impressive until you compare it to horses, which have been around for over 50 million years. And when climate change made forests give way to grasslands, Calicotherium couldn't adapt. It was too specialized, too weird, too inefficient, it went extinct, and no similar animals ever evolved to replace it. Nature tried the knuckle-walking mega-herbivore with claws experiment, and evolution said, nope, this doesn't work long term. Speaking of failed mammalian experiments, we need to talk about the Chalicothers contemporaries, the Desmostylians. If you've never heard of Desmostylians, don't feel bad. They're one of the most obscure groups of extinct mammals, and that's a shame because they were wonderfully weird. Desmostylians were marine mammals that lived during the Oligocene and Miocene, about 33 to 10 million years ago. They were hippo-sized, barrel-shaped herbivores with stumpy legs and bizarre teeth that looked like bundled columns. Hence the name Desmostylia, which means bundled columns. The largest genus was Desmostylus itself, which could weigh up to 400 kilograms or 880 pounds. These animals lived along the coastlines of the North Pacific, feeding on seaweed, and marine vegetation. And here's the thing, they were terrible at it. Desmostylians had dense, heavy bones for buoyancy control, similar to manatees. But unlike manatees, which are streamlined and graceful in the water, Desmostylians were chunky and slow. Their limbs were adapted for walking on the ocean floor, not swimming efficiently. They probably spent their time just slowly lumbering around in shallow water, munching on kelp. The problem was that they weren't efficient enough. True marine mammals, like whales and seals, were much better swimmers. True terrestrial mammals, like deer and horses, were much better at walking. Desmostylians were stuck in the middle. Amphibious specialists that weren't particularly good at either lifestyle. They lasted for about 23 million years, but never diversified much. There were only a handful of genera, all restricted to the North Pacific. And when ocean temperatures changed and their kelp forests started to decline, they couldn't adapt. By 10 million years ago, they were completely extinct. Nature tried to create a hippo-manatee hybrid, and it sort of worked for a while, but ultimately, it was too much of a compromise. Now let's talk about one of the most famous failed experiments, the Irish elk, also known as Megalocorus gigantea. This wasn't actually an elk. It was more closely related to fallow deer, but it was absolutely enormous. Males stood up to 2.1 meters, or 6.9 feet at the shoulder, and weighed around 600 kilograms, or 1,300 pounds. That's already impressive. But the real showstopper was the antlers. The antlers of male Irish elk were the largest of any deer species ever, reaching up to 3.65 meters, or 12 feet across, and weighing up to 40 kilograms, or 88 pounds. Imagine carrying 88 pounds of bone on your head. That's like walking around with a small person sitting on your skull 
all day. These antlers were almost certainly the result of sexual selection. Females preferred males with bigger antlers, so evolution kept making them bigger and bigger. But at some point, the antlers became a serious liability. First, they were metabolically expensive. Growing 40 kilograms of bone every year requires massive amounts of calcium and nutrients. Second, they were heavy and awkward. Moving through forests would have been difficult. Running from predators was harder. And if a male fell or got stuck, those antlers could easily trap him. Third, and this is the big one, climate change hit. As the last ice age ended and forests expanded, those massive antlers became even more of a hindrance. Irish elk couldn't navigate dense forests like smaller deer could. They were restricted to open areas. And as those areas shrank, so did their population. By about 7,700 years ago, Irish elk were completely extinct. Sexual selection had driven their antlers to such extreme sizes that when environmental conditions changed, they couldn't adapt. Those magnificent antlers, the very thing that made males attractive to females, became the thing that doomed the species. It's a textbook example of evolution, creating something beautiful but impractical. And it's a reminder that bigger isn't always better. But if you want to talk about impractical giants, we need to discuss the ground sloths of South America, particularly Megatherium. Megatherium was one of the largest land mammals ever, weighing up to four tons and reaching lengths of six meters or 20 feet. When standing upright, it could reach heights of 5.3 meters or 17 feet, taller than a giraffe. This thing was built like a tank with massive claws, powerful limbs, and a thick coat of fur. It was an herbivore that fed on tree leaves, using its size to reach vegetation other animals couldn't access. And for millions of years, it was incredibly successful throughout South America. So what went wrong? The problem with Megatherium wasn't its design. It was actually well adapted for its environment. The problem was timing and bad luck. When humans arrived in South America about 15,000 years ago, Megatherium was already dealing with climate change at the end of the Ice Age. And then suddenly, you add a new predator to the mix, one that hunts in groups, uses tools, and doesn't give up. Megatherium was slow, it was conspicuous, and it had no fear of humans because it had never encountered them before. It was the perfect target for human hunters, and within a few thousand years, it was gone. But here's the interesting part. Smaller ground sloths survived for longer. Some island populations persisted until as recently as 4,400 years ago. The giant ones went extinct first because they were easier to find, easier to hunt, and provided more food per kill. So Megatherium wasn't really a failed experiment in the evolutionary sense. It was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Its gigantism, which had been an advantage for millions of years, became a liability when a new type of predator showed up. Now, let's talk about one final failed giant, and this one is absolutely heartbreaking. Stellar's sea cow. Stellar's sea cow was discovered in 1741 by Europeans exploring the Commander Islands near Alaska. It was an enormous marine mammal, reaching lengths of up to 9 meters or 30 feet, and weighing up to 10 tons. It was a relative of manatees and dugongs, but absolutely massive. These animals were completely docile. They had no natural predators and no fear of humans. They floated in shallow kelp beds, slowly munching on seaweed, occasionally coming up to breathe. They were described as gentle, curious, and even affectionate toward each other. And here's the tragic part. They went extinct in just 27 years after their discovery. Stellar's sea cow had thick blubber that made excellent lamp oil. Their meat was edible, and they were slow and easy to catch. Hunters would harpoon one, and the others would gather around trying to help, making them even easier targets. By 1768, less than three decades after Europeans found them, they were completely extinct. But here's the thing. Stellar's sea cow was already on thin ice before humans showed up. They were restricted to a tiny range in the North Pacific, probably due to over-specialization. They needed very specific kelp species, very specific water temperatures, and very specific conditions. When sea otters were hunted to near extinction, the kelp forests declined, and Stellar's sea cows suffered. So humans delivered the final blow, but Stellar's sea cow was already a failed experiment in the sense that it was too specialized, too restricted, too vulnerable. Its gigantism required massive amounts of food, which meant it needed healthy kelp forests. When those forests were disrupted, it couldn't adapt. It's a reminder 
that being a giant specialist is incredibly risky. You need perfect conditions to survive, and the moment those conditions change, you're in trouble. So what's the common thread here? What makes these giant animals evolutionary failures? The answer is usually one of three things. Overspecialization, energetic cost, or bad timing. Overspecialization is probably the biggest killer. Dinochirus with its weird, omnivorous build. Therizinosaurus with its absurd claws. Calicotherium with its knuckle walking. Stellar's sea cow with its kelp dependency. These animals evolved to fill very specific niches, and when conditions changed, they couldn't adapt. Energetic cost is the second issue. Maintaining a giant body is expensive. You need lots of food, lots of territory, and lots of resources. When resources become scarce, small animals can survive on scraps. Giants can't. Irish elk antlers. Megatherium's massive body. Therizinosaurus's claws. All of these required huge energy investments. And when times got tough, those investments became fatal. And finally, bad timing. Sometimes evolution creates something that works perfectly for millions of years, but then conditions change rapidly. An asteroid hits, the climate shifts, humans show up, and there's no time to adapt. Megatherium probably could have survived if humans had arrived 100,000 years later after it had a chance to evolve wariness, but it didn't get that chance. The thing about evolution is that it's not forward thinking. It can't predict the future. It just optimizes organisms for their current environment. And when the environment changes faster than evolution can keep up, which is exactly what's happening right now with climate change and human impact, giants are usually the first to go. Looking at the modern world, we're watching this happen in real time. Polar bears are struggling as sea ice disappears. Elephants are being poached to extinction. Large predators are losing habitat. Giants are always vulnerable because they need so much space, so many resources, so much stability. And that's the bittersweet lesson from nature's failed experiments. Being big is amazing. When conditions are right, you're strong, you're dominant, you can reach food others can't, you have few predators. But the moment conditions change, your size becomes your downfall. Every giant animal we've discussed today was once successful. They lived for hundreds of thousands or even millions of years. They filled their ecological niches perfectly. But evolution isn't about being perfect forever. It's about being adaptable enough to handle change. And these giants, they couldn't change fast enough. So the next time you see an elephant or a giraffe or a whale, appreciate them because they're not just impressive. They're survivors. They're the giants that haven't failed yet. They're still here, still adapting, still fighting against the odds. But if history has taught us anything, it's that being a giant is a risky evolutionary strategy. You might dominate for millions of years, but eventually the world changes. And when it does, size stops being an advantage and starts being a curse. Nature keeps trying to create giants and nature keeps learning that giants, no matter how magnificent, are often just one environmental shift away from extinction. Thanks for watching.